Hey, welcome back to uh, Bulldogs Live with Georgia head coach Kirby Smart. We thank you for being with us tonight. Our friends from uh, Georgia Power are here tonight here in Athens. So thank you folks for uh, being here and uh, being in front of us for the show tonight. They're kind of quiet. I don't know. They are. We, well, we got to get them out of their shell. Uh, last mm-hmm. week was like that, too. Uh, it was, uh, you know, everybody's on their best behavior, I guess, right? Oh. Is that is that why you're so quiet? They're just complacent. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're just happy to be here. They've got food in their bellies and uh, uh, are ready to cheer on the dogs this week as we uh, get ready to go. So Coach Smart is here. We'll take some of your questions tonight. Uh, from uh, hashtag Ask Coach Smart. That's brought to you by Greenpoint Ag. Greenpoint Ag, farmer-owned, locally focused. And Bulldogs Live is presented by Wells Fargo. And Wells Fargo is an official sponsor of the Georgia Bulldogs. And, uh, Coach, how was your week this week as you get ready for that conference opener? It's been good. We uh, we had good uh, good practices and good energy. I thought the en- enthusiasm uh, ramped up some uh, Tuesday. It was a little warm Monday. We didn't have our best practice Monday. I thought we went out and a little ho hum. And then Tuesday we thought we were going to get showers and uh, we we didn't. So it's overcast and they had a good spirited practice. And then Wednesday was okay. And then we we uh, had a good one today. So I think the guys are excited. They know they've got a um, opportunity to play in front. Of a home crowd and an SEC opponent, and uh, you, you don't take those things for granted. Yeah, another conference team, I, I would imagine, kind of gets the juices going a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely, especially with the way South Carolina closed out the year. Our players get to watch them play and how well they played, and they know a lot of these guys as cross-state rivals, and, and we got a couple kids from that area. So uh, I know they're excited for an opportunity to go out and play on a, on a big stage with that CBS game. The schedule uh, will look different in the future from here on out. I know that's not a real big concern, but uh, next year we don't even play these guys as the, mm-hmm. you know, the um, um, uh, expansion takes place yet again with with Oklahoma and Texas coming in. So uh, we lose these guys off the schedule next year, and that's going to be a little bit odd for the first time since I guess they joined the league in '92. Will be the first time we haven't played them. Yeah, that is different. That's that's a very unique um, circumstance. So we get to play some teams we haven't played. So that'll be good too. Right. Uh, so you'd, you'd like to go into that off time, however long that is, um, uh, you know, certainly with a good performance and uh, hopefully a win. Yep, that's right. The big thing is to get off on a good foot and keep improving. Our, our big goal is not about the – it's never about just W as everybody thinks it is. It's about playing better. And we certainly got a lot of areas we can improve in, and, and this week gives us an opportunity to do that again. What do you feel like some of those areas are? Everything. I mean, we really aren't playing. We're not getting turnovers. Uh, you know, we, 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 we've got to do a better job. We had one good punt return, but outside of that, we haven't blocked a punt yet. We haven't uh, dominated the field position game, something we got to do. Being explosive early on offense, um, we've had explosive plays, but not necessarily early. And uh, defensively, more three and outs. So it's it's just an area that, that, that with teams we've played, you know, you're never happy unless you totally dominate them. you got to give the other team credit. It and we're going to play a, a good team this this weekend that, that can take advantage of some of those mistakes. With uh, turnovers, you've talked about uh, you'd like to see more, you know, rip outs and all that, and, and forcing fumbles and that uh, that uh, sort of thing. You had three turnovers last week with uh, interceptions, but yeah. uh, didn't get the fumbles. How much are you guys, you know, w- working on that? And how, what kind of work are you putting in during the week? To, Always to try to learn that do it a little bit better you always it becomes a habit right so we talk about it we bring it to the realization that, that the only way it's going to happen is if you do it in practice and it carries over and we preach it and uh, we attack the ball and it's got to carry over to the game or it doesn't matter georgia and south carolina will play at uh, 3 30 official kick time is 3 39 on uh, saturday at sanford stadium uh, and uh, the conference opener so it should be a lot of fun we hope you will be there Uh, on Saturday, and uh, we hope you come on back to uh, Bulldogs Live. We'll step aside for just a moment, get back to some questions for Coach Kirby Smart that you sent in via the hashtag AskCoachSmart. We'll do that right after this on the Georgia Bulldogs Sports Network. Welcome back, Bulldogs Live, with Georgia head coach Kirby Smart, and uh, thanks to our friends from Georgia Power for being here tonight as our audience. Bulldogs Live is presented by Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo is an official sponsor of the Georgia Bulldogs. And uh, we're going to get to some questions for the coach that you sent in via the hashtag AskCoachSmart. That's brought to you by Greenpoint Ag. Greenpoint Ag, farmer-owned and locally focused. And we want to remind you to follow Georgia Bulldogs All Access on social media by searching at UGA underscore GBSM. Georgia Bulldogs Sports Marketing provides your inside connection to UGA Athletics, 
with exclusive updates and behind-the-scenes content, including the Kirby Smart All Access TV show. You can follow at UGA underscore GBSM. And uh, as I said, our, we've got our friends from uh, Georgia Power here tonight, and uh, one of our buddies is Judah. And Judah has a question for the coach to get us started tonight. Who is pound for pound the strongest guy on the team? Oh, Judah, that's a good question. I uh, We do an award for that, and I cannot remember who won that this year. I'm going to cheat somebody. The players would kill me for this. But we, um, we, we at the start of the season, the Coach Sinclair gets up in front of the team and he does uh, um, power clean, bench press, and squat. And they add those three together. And then they divide the, the weight of the player. And so whichever one comes out to be a highest number is the strongest man pound for pound. And uh, it's slipping my mind who it was. I know that Dylan Fairchild had the highest three uh, combined lifts, but his weight's pretty high too. So I don't know that he won the strongest pound for pound guy on the team. I, I want to say it may have been uh, one of the small guys like Muse or one of them because they had really good strength and they had uh, their weight was down. So pound for pound, it was one of those quick uh, small guys. But I tell you what, we got some guys with some big numbers. I do know the, the highest number we may have ever had was Isaiah McKenzie because he had really good lifts, but he didn't weigh that much. So pound for pound, he was one of the stronger guys. Thanks for the question, Judah. Appreciate it, Judah. Thank you for being here. Did I hear Cash Jones maybe in that it, category? It may be Cash Jones. He may have been the one. It was a, it was someone that shocked everybody. I think it may have been uh, Cash Jones actually. Uh, if it was you, Cash, I apologize. <laughs> what can you what can you say and and tell us about him and and his journey to uh, where he is right now? Well, I, I give. Uh, Coach McGee, a lot of credit. He uh, he brought him to us and said that he he thought he was a really good back and he had some small school offers. And uh, Dale had kind of talked to him about being a walk on and coming here, and he wanted to play at a major college. And 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 we gave him the opportunity, and sure enough, he's come in and worked himself into a really solid, good player. When he got here, he was fast. He was small, um, but he made a lot of explosive runs. He was a scout team guy that kept showing up, showing up, and um, he's worked himself into. I mean, he's been around so many good backs. He's been with Zamir and James and been around all those guys. He's, he he does a really good job for us. He, he played on special teams, you know, for a couple of years before he even started playing at running back. So I'm really proud of what he's done. He's from – Texas, how yep. difficult is it to get walk-ons from, from out of state like that? It's hard because there's, you know, 150 schools between here and there that they can go to as well. So he had to make the decision and the commitment that he really wanted to be here. And he's formed a unique bond with the, the, his grades, you know, with all the guys he's gotten to know really well. And uh, he's got great friends here now. And it's always great to, you know, see his parents come back and forth between games. And he's just a, a, a product of hard work. And uh, that's what he's done. He's worked really hard. He's been through some tough injuries. I mean, he was getting to the point he could help us last year, and he had a really significant ankle injury during bowl practice. Bounced right back and came back from that to, to have the year he's had this year. Let's get a question from uh, hashtag AskCoachSmart. You can send them in any time on your uh, favorite social platform. And the hashtag is brought to you by Greenpoint Ag. Greenpoint Ag is farmer-owned and locally focused. Our first one uh, tonight is uh, how do you simulate – this is from Tracy in in Columbus. How do you simulate uh, adverse situations in practice? I don't really know. Um, uh, I mean – we, we create difficult situations. Um, we we make things tough on them. That, that could be temperature. That could be crowd noise. Um, that could be number of reps. Uh, there's a lot of way to create adverse situations. You know, uh, put them in a bad situation, meaning it's third and 20. <laughs> it's, 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 it's third and one for the defense. So we, we try to create those um, as much as possible. And, you know, sometimes you put yourself in those holes and you have to work your way out. So you can just you can create the situation any way you want to, right? Absolutely, you got to. Uh, Bo in Duluth, Georgia. Uh, between the first two games, was there any particular area where you noticed growth? Say that again. Uh, between the first two games. Oh yeah, I mean the the biggest growth probably for us was special teams. I thought we played a lot better um, in the special teams in the in the second game. We obviously create we got the turnovers, but they were gifts. You know, we probably earned one of those, and the other two were um, mistakes, tip balls, those kind of things. And you're going to catch some lucky breaks. They caught one on us off a tip ball. So, um, but both games, 
I was pleased with our explosiveness uh, on offense. We hit our explosive goal. We did not hit our havoc goal in the first game of defense, but we did in the second game. So, you know, there were things – I thought we improved in practice. And and I don't you don't always see it in the in the, a game is such a small window, um, but we 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 improved a lot in the way we practice week two. You mentioned the turnovers. Malachi made a really nice play on, on his interception. He sure did. He went up and got it. He timed the jump. I thought that was really aggressive. That showed a lot of improvement for him because not just uh, the first week's play he didn't get. He had a couple plays last year that he didn't get in those same situations, and he was able to get, make those plays. Uh, Larry in Athens sent this question in. Do you feel like Carson Beck is getting in more of a rhythm? Yeah, I do. Uh, I see it in practice, the confidence there. I, it's really not a matter of not seeing it. You know, I thought in the spring he had good uh, command, good decision-making. And then fall camp he had good command, good decision-making. So he's been very consistent in my eyes, and I'm looking at a, a larger body of work. Larry, thanks for your questions. Uh, you can send them in any time. Hashtag Ask Coach Smart. This is Bulldogs Live, presented by Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo is an official sponsor of the Georgia Bulldogs. We've got more questions for the coach, so come on back right after this timeout on the Bulldogs Sports Network. Thanks for being with us tonight. Bulldogs Live with Georgia head coach Kirby Smart. The dogs getting ready for South Carolina on Saturday at 3.30. Official kick time, 3.39 Saturday afternoon. Our airtime here on the Bulldogs Sports Network will be 11.30 for uh, all your pregame programming. And you get a full day of uh, Georgia on the radio when the dogs play on the weekend. And dog fans, be sure to check out the G-Shop at georgiadogs.com for exclusive releases of Nike game day official apparel, just like the coaches wear. Visit georgiadogs.com and the G-Shop today let's grab another question from our uh, friends from georgia power they're our audience tonight here in athens and we thank them for being here this is tony hi tony welcome to the show what's your question for the coach thank you coach in your opinion what is that all important leadership quality that you look for from the leaders on this team and i do have a follow-up question if you're comfortable answering this what leadership skill do you personally feel you can improve on um, the player part of that, I guess you're asking which quality uh, in a leader we look for the most or like which one's the most important. What's the question? Yeah. Um, I think just being okay, being uncomfortable. You know, I don't know that that's a, that's, a, that's a quality, but it's something that we certainly look for is, you know, when things are uncomfortable and, and things aren't going well, are you going to be one of the guys that's, that's willing to uh, – to speak up and and maybe demand more um i think that's harder to do when things aren't going well it's easy to do when things are going well so we look for those qualities and we actually try to develop them because we think it's a developed trait it's not something that you're just born with inherently that that you can actually develop that trait and you can mimic it too you can copy others and we've tried to have two or three really good classes that these young guys can follow and see how to do that um, as far as a trait I would like to improve on as a leader, there's a lot of them, but um, probably patience um, would be one of the ones for me because um, I, I, I tend to lose, I don't have much patience, and I, I tend to lose my patience when um, things aren't going well or I don't think people are paying attention to the things that matter the most. And uh, I think the, the, the seven years experience here has helped me to have more of that, but not to the level that I need. Yeah. Tony, thanks, thanks for your questions. Appreciate it tonight. Thanks for being here. Uh, back to uh, hashtag Ask Coach Smart. Uh, it's brought to you by Greenpoint Ag. Greenpoint Ag, farmer owned, locally focused. Our questions from social media. Uh, Coach Cardi from Thomasville says, I enjoy watching new players emerge each week. Please tell me uh, about uh, freshman defensive lineman Jordan Hall and Jamal Jarrett. Yeah, they're both um, working really hard. They've uh, they've been with us and and really competed since last spring. They were mid-year enrollees. Jordan uh, has been uh, ha able to help us. He's helped in third down situations, uh, rotational play. It's really hard physically to play offensive and defensive line as a freshman. Basically, you don't find it very often because there's a certain level of weight room um, that's involved in that play. Like it's. 80% weight room and 20% skill set, where the other ones are probably 80% skill set, 20% weight room. And, and they both 
need that. Um, Jordan's done a good job of being able to help us out in some situational stuff and, and giving us some depth. Uh, ja, Jamal has, has had a couple injuries when he first got here. He had to have the, the tightrope deal put on his ankle. That set him back. He's had a wrist. So he's had some injuries um, for, since his first arrival, but he's he is a, a great kid that's working really hard. They both are. They work so hard, and, and I think they got a good future here. Uh, Judah asked the question, who was the strongest pound for pound earlier? Uh, I think Jamal might be the largest player on your team, though, right? He's, yeah. What is he, around 350? Yeah, he's right around 350. and he's 6'6", something like that? He's gone down to get to 350, so he continues the, the progression downward. He might he might argue right now he's 345, and, and we're going to keep knocking some off of him. And he's getting better, man. I love watching him go and compete because we've seen some kids really grow up on that scout team and get better, and he's he's improving. From a size standpoint, does he have some uh, Jordan Davis traits there? Well, Jordan was so much taller than him. He's uh, he's everybody talks about those similarities, but Jordan was a longer, uh, taller version of him. Jamal's probably a little got a little more width than Jordan does, but they're both big men. Uh, Phil in Macon, Georgia, wants to know if after last week's uh, noon game, were you able to watch some night games at your home? Uh, tried to had the family over and spent time with them and um, uh, got to watch some of the games that afternoon. I think when I got home, there were like five or six games on. Um, and then that night, there was several SEC games on. So I got to see uh, multiple SEC games of teams that, you know, will be playing down the road. So that's always good. How long does uh, recruiting duties usually keep you after a game? Well, it depends. If we have official visitors, then pretty much all night the next day. If we just have unofficial visitors, um, then most of those guys leave, and, and we'll get to see them briefly after the game. So it just depends on how many guys we have in. This is a big weekend coming up, I yeah, would imagine. Big weekend coming up, so it'll, it'll go into the night. Um, Jackie in Valdosta, Georgia, how do you prepare our guys for the physicality of SEC play? Well, we prepare for it every day. It starts in the off season. We lift weights really hard in January, February, March, and we practice in 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 spring. So March and in April, we get to practice and get after it. So it's not an overnight thing. It's not something we try to get ready for the week of the game. We prepare for it year round. And uh, SEC is a physical league, and there's a lot of big physical bodies that go against each other. And it is here, Jackie. Thank you for your question. It is here this weekend, the first of uh, eight conference games in the regular season. It begins Saturday afternoon with Georgia and South Carolina. 3.39 uh, is the official kick time. And uh, our coverage starts at 11.30 a.m. Saturday morning here on the Bulldogs Network. So we hope you will join us then. Uh, we'll step aside for just a moment uh, for these words and important messages. And we'll come back for more of your questions for Coach Kirby Smart. This is Bulldogs Live on the Georgia Bulldogs Sports Network. Howard. Thursday night, uh, Bulldogs Live with Coach Kirby Smart. A couple of days away from the SEC opener for the Dogs. Georgia hosting South Carolina Saturday afternoon in Athens at uh, 3.30. Our show tonight presented by Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo is an official sponsor of the Georgia Bulldogs. And stay with us through the next hour. We've got the Bulldogs All-Stars coming up. Another hour of Georgia Bulldogs football talk and your chance to join in as well. Phone calls for Georgia former uh, former Georgia players and Neil Williamson taking your calls and questions from uh, 8 until 9 o'clock tonight. Uh, if uh, Georgia fans, you want to do an NIL deal with a dog, you can go to georgiadogs.com forward slash NIL and connect with a student athlete on a sponsorship, a commercial, an appearance, an autograph session, and lots more. That's georgiadogs.com. All right, let's uh, grab a question from our audience tonight. Our friends from Georgia Power are here. I'm glad to have them in the building. And this is Chandler. We're back for a return visit, I understand. Chandler, thank you for being here again. And what's your question for the coach? I liked watching Andrew help Carson warm up on Saturday before the game. <laughs> what is his favorite part of being the head coach's son? <laughs> That's a good question. I think he 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 maximizes that to the uh, to the biggest degree because he uh, he likes being around the players. I know he enjoys. He tries to get here for practice every day, and um, he typically has a lot of homework to do. So when he doesn't do his homework, we don't let him come. Um, Probably his favorite thing is catching the ball. He likes to catch the ball in warm-ups. Um, he has a he has an equipment manager that he uses to throw passes to him. So that's his favorite thing to do is catch passes. Chandler, thanks for your question. Appreciate it. Does he have an all-access pass? He must. 
<laughs> he, 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 I, I see him sometimes in the middle of the game, and I, somebody says he just went into the bathroom, and I'm like, he just went into the locker room in the middle of the game, and um, I encourage him not to do that. So, <laughs> Is that where that patience comes into play yeah, again? Exactly. The fact that I even know that is scary. He needs to stay put. Hey, let's uh, look ahead uh, right now to the weekend. It's brought to you by the Georgia's uh, Georgia, the Governor's Office of Highway Safety. There we go. Uh, the penalty for getting a DUI can cost up to ten thousand dollars. That's why the Governor's Office of Highway Safety says drive sober, so you won't get pulled over. Just uh, quick thoughts on, on the weekend ahead. I, I know it's hard to put a, a bow on that thing uh, the, with the conference game coming up, the opener. But uh, just your initial thoughts on on this matchup on Saturday. I'm excited. I mean, uh, I think that, uh, you know, our fan base is is hungry for one of these type home games. And you get a chance to play at 3.30. You know, hopefully the weather cooperates and gives us a, a great atmosphere. And I know everybody will come out and get loud and affect the game. I, you know, it's it's we're always, as coaches, we, coaches are the easiest people to say, you know what, we're not going to look past anybody. We're going to have a game plan. We're going to get everything ready. We prepare for every opponent as if it's nameless and faceless. We don't know who it is. It's just the opponent. And the fans and the players have to do the same thing. And sometimes getting that across to the players – can be difficult if they don't understand that you have to be at your best at all times and in same way with for our fan base we have to be at our best at all times and and we're going to need these guys we need them to affect the quarterback on saturday make it hard um for him to have success and and, and hard on them dog walk at 115 on saturday the the gates open at 130 so right into the stadium and uh, get your seat and start making some noise when as soon as you get in there um you need it and you guys will come out shortly after that for warm-ups, and uh, that's always fun to watch. And uh, it's a little more of a loose environment, loose atmosphere, and and right here, right up to uh, to kick off at 3:39. Uh, how long is that list of things that you guys, as coaches, when you prepare for each team, how long is that list to make sure you got everything checked off in your final preparation for each game? Well, it's a lot, but it, uh, there's no checklist per se as much as it is a routine. You know, you go through the routine and you're always looking for an edge and it doesn't matter if you're doing red area, short yardage, goal line, two minute, two point. I mean, there's situational football that we do. You're always trying to find um, an edge of what might give you a chance to be more successful than the other team. And while you're doing all that, you got to be careful you don't lose sight of fundamentals and just saying, all right, we're get better at this. we got to get better at this. And uh, we got to get better at tackling all the fundamental things. And we try hard to balance our practice between what's specific to an opponent and what's specific to the sport of football. Let's get a question from hashtag Ask Coach Smart, brought to you by Greenpoint Ag. Greenpoint Ag is farmer-owned and locally focused. Uh, this one comes from Jason in Augusta. What do you see as the biggest challenges for college football right now? Man, um, there's challenges all over the place. I mean, the biggest challenge is is probably, you know, building a team and developing a team because so many of the, the, the guys you either inherited by way of signing or portal and you'll lose – some guys every year it's not gonna it's not gonna be a school that doesn't have people that that doesn't look for another everybody's not playing everybody's not happy so i don't care what program it is they're gonna have people looking to leave and go somewhere else so i guess the influx and outflux the inflow and outflow of of uh of, of the players is the toughest thing is 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 navigating you know what you're gonna have um the next year and, and building it from scratch sometimes is that something you can uh, – we talked about patience earlier. The, the patient, players need to be more patient, too, to, to get their shot. If they're not playing right now, you know, that doesn't mean they're not going to be playing uh, this time next year or maybe two years from now. Is there a patience problem with, uh, with kids now in college football that just want to jump, you know, wherever they think the grass might be a little bit greener? I don't know that there's a patience problem. I think um, they do it in high school. You know, they do it at lower levels. So it's become uh, very, very common. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know that it's a patience problem as much as it is. It's a decision that they're making for the for their best interest. Um, and that's the society we live in today. That it's it's for the best interest of maybe the individual and not necessarily the the greater whole. Uh, Toby in Atlanta wants to know uh, what uh, jumps off to you. Pardon me. Uh, what jumps off to you uh, about South Carolina when you look at video of them? 
the quickness of their front in terms of um, the quickness of penetrating movement and then the, the explosiveness of their wide receivers. They've got a wide receiving core, once you include the tight ends and the backs, that is uh, really impressive. Uh, and they got a guy that can, that can deal it to them. The quarterback can make all the throws. I mean, he's got elite arm talent. Does that change at all what you uh, want to do defensively? Do you have to play more, you know, more backs, more secondary men, or um, not to give away your game plan? <laughs> well, but that's exactly what you're trying to do, Scott. I'm, I'm not trying to do can't that. Tell you that. I wouldn't do I mean, that. Come on, we don't want to tell everybody what I the plan is. I can answer that question as bland as you want it to me. I don't want Shane tuning into this and figuring <laughs> out what we're doing. Come on. <laughs> all right, we'll come, come Saturday and you'll figure it out. We'll move on. We'll move on and we'll wait until Saturday with bated breath. All right, this is Bulldogs Live with Coach Kirby Smart. It's presented by Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo is an official sponsor of the Georgia Bulldogs. We'll step aside for just a moment, come back for more questions for the coach right after this on the Bulldog Sports Network. Tonight's show presented by Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo, an official sponsor of the Georgia Bulldogs. This is Bulldogs Live with Coach Kirby Smart. And our audience tonight are friends from Georgia Power. And uh, Neil has our next question from our audience. Hi, Neil. Welcome to the show. What's your question? Hey, Scott. Hey, Coach. Um, when you finally get home at night, what do you watch on TV that is not football? Braves. All Got right. that thing done last night. I was talking to Snit, and I was proud of them, man. I mean, think about how many years in a row they have pulled that off. Is it six in a row to win the – I mean, that's like – crazy to me and to do it like they did it this year with you know the injuries and everything they've had i mean they're just a machine um i like watching them i i, I used to never be able to watch a, a baseball game was too slow but the the speeding up of the, the the pitchers really helped my appetite for baseball i don't have to i don't have to turn away from the tv long the next pitch is coming neil thanks for your question yeah it's like a two and a half hour game now it, it and that's on the long end in a lot of cases it's awesome um how, how about that uh, first down clock movement, uh, the change in college football? How is, have you seen that working so far? I, it's just shortening the game a little bit. You know, I always say that. Although that first game wasn't too short. No, it was not. <laughs> it's not. But I, it'll be interesting to see once they have, you know, some conference play, how much how much it's actually affecting the game. But it's just shortening the game. It, it, like I tell people, the more, the more snaps you have and you're – you think you're the better team, it's in your favor. The less snaps, there's 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 a greater chance of upsets to me. So, But we'll see if it's actually substantial. Uh, another question from hashtag Ask Coach Smart from uh, Foster in Virginia. How physical is this year's defense uh, at the line of scrimmage? Yeah, I, I, I – I feel like we have a really fit, we always have a physical defense and offensive lines. We're we're not going to not have a physical offensive and defensive lines. How physical? How strong? How tough? How dominant? I don't think we know that yet. I think when you when you match up with someone size speed like yourself, you know, closer to what we're going to have uh, we're going to have this weekend. There's going to be got guys that look like our guys, and um, you're going to find out more. You know, so I don't know that we can measure it based on what we've seen thus far. Uh, Blake and Waynesboro, as a player, do you have any memories against South Carolina? Um, yeah, Deuce, Deuce Staley running wild on us. He uh, he ran wild for a lot of yards up at South Carolina one game. Um, and then I had a game where I had a couple sacks on Tannehill that I always remember. It's the first game I think I ever got to actually play in. So um, it's one of my first memories in Sanford Stadium is playing these guys. Did you get him by his hair? I hung on for dear life. I look <laughs> like a rodeo rider. <laughs> he used to have that long hair hanging out of his helmet. Uh, Tony in Watkinsville, uh, how important is a big-time SEC matchup atmosphere for recruiting? Oh, it's huge. I mean, kids want to go and have fun. They love the atmosphere. They, they get excited by it. I mean, you're not going to have kids wanting to go to a school that doesn't fill it up and, and pack it out for these kind of games. And the thing is that that's the case for everybody in the SEC. You know, everybody in the SEC has really good attendance and good atmosphere, and that's what makes it fun to play in this league because whether you're playing home or away, you get to play in a hell of an atmosphere. How many, if you can tell us this, how many people do you normally bring in for a game like this as far as recruits are concerned? I don't even know. I mean, it's a large number. Yeah, 100, let's say, and they get to bring um, two guests besides themselves. So it's like, you know, it's one of those deals. We'll end up with three to 400 in our, in our recruiting room. They're not all recruits, but they're guests of recruits. And you try to your best to 
meet all those folks if you haven't oh, met them no. already or i won't get a chance to meet them all there's no way i get to shake some hands meet some people before meet some after um you know you try to do as much as you can but we have a lot of staff that get to spend time with them as well uh dave in rome georgia uh hometown of tate Radledge. Uh, yep. were you surprised that the uab kickoff time got slated as a night game not surprised by anything anymore <laughs> just go with the flow and, and take it as it is i know that uh i thought we might when um south carolina and Furman was announced to be at night and south carolina was going on the road ne- the next week to us so i was like well that kind of fits the pattern of we're going to go uab at night at home and then go on the road the next week um, to auburn so i thought it might it might fall that way well the, certainly the fan base enjoys the night games but uh, we'll take them at any time the dogs kick off between the hedges this is bulldogs live with coach kirby smart we'll step aside one more time we have one more segment with the coach here we'll fire a few more questions his way right after this on the bulldog sports network hashtag ask coach smart marcus and alpharetta how is the running back room starting to gel and gain confidence? Well, number one, gel and get healthy. I mean, that's the biggest thing is the health in that room. And gaining confidence comes from uh, experience, catching the ball out of the backfield, making runs, making people miss. And um, we continue to work hard at that. And those guys have done a great job. So I'm hoping that, that more and more of them are healthy and that Dejan's healthy and that we get those guys all back so that we can get that thing rolling. Uh, Roderick's played pretty well for you i know he's a freshman but uh he's giving you some good snaps and some good minutes he has he's picking things up and he's getting better with his protections and his, his confidence uh ronnie in athens georgia i know you've touched on this a little bit earlier tonight what kind of environment do you expect inside sanford stadium on saturday the best in the country and should settle for nothing less so they should impact the game in a hardcore way uh, game time will be uh, 3.30, uh, 3.39 on Saturday. Uh, last question. We've got about 30 seconds to go. Uh, Cindy in Bogart, Georgia, which DB would you say has the best ball skills? Mm, they'll argue about that all day. I mean, <laughs> they'll fight Malachi, the Bull, Kamari, uh, uh, Taki. They all, they all got good ball skills. I mean, they can, they, they played high school um, offensive positions. I think it'd be a toss up. I, I don't know. I, I could probably tell you the worst, but I don't want to embarrass him. I know the worst better than I know the best, if you know what I mean. Like there's, there's some guys tied at the top, but there's one at the bottom, and uh, <laughs> we, we won't, we won't, we won't say that. All right, very good. Thank uh, you, guys. Kirby, thanks for your time tonight. Thanks for answering all the questions, and uh, good luck this weekend. All right, thank you, guys. Go dogs. Well, that is Coach Kirby Smart, Georgia and South Carolina. Uh, this weekend, we've got more Bulldogs live for you with the Bulldogs.